Well, good morning, good morning, Double Portion Kingdom Ministries. Welcome to the Sunday morning family and friends gathering. This is the day that the Lord has made, and, and we shall, we shall, we shall rejoice and be glad. Well, I am excited that each and every one of you chose to join us this morning. I say good morning to everybody that's joining live, and good morning to those of you that are watching the YouTube playback. There is a word for God from you, so get ready, get your pens, get your paper, get ready, because God is going to do something special this morning. So let's go higher in praise and worship.
free. I am free. I am free. Praise the Lord. Well, God, I thank you for Melvin Crispell and his group that minister ushered in that worship is something else. And for me to be able to sit back and watch that, I was watching it while I was doing it, but to watch it now and to see every one of your faces being blessed in the presence of the Lord, God, we thank you and we praise you for this place of coming back in and, and pressing restart. And, and, and being able to review last night and go forward into the next day. And we thank you, God, that you get the glory. You get the honor. You get the praise. God, we thank you that even the theme for our meeting was 
Uh, there is a double portion blessing in your identity and God bless them. So we thank you, God, for technology whereby we were able to bask in your presence last weekend, but then we're able to come back and re delve back in and get the second portion of what you wanted us to understand about our identity. So we just thank you and we praise you. I want to say a special prayer right now for Minister Georgia and Minister Darius. I called you ministers because a minister is a servant and you are serving unto the Lord. And there is no way that last weekend would have been able to go off as flawless as it did without your assistance. Georgia on the camera, Darius on the slides, running the sound in the back. Also, Elytra helping out with the camera. Thank you so much. As I was pulling this back together on today and, and I was trying to do it where I could be standing up because Professor told me, he said, uh, you a, you a walking preacher. And I realized I am, I, 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 can, I can roll sitting here in my chair, but I can roll on moving around as you saw in part one and those that were there, I flow either way. But it would not have been possible for me to flow the way I flowed without Darius and in the sound booth and Georgia capturing it on video. So God, I thank you for sending people. It's not, there's no big eyes and little you. It's not just Don's ministry or Paulette's ministry, but you're sending people where they can put their gifts to the usury. That's how I became who I am, by putting my gifts to the usury, helping the Fellowship of Love Church, helping Cassandra Scott Ministries, helping Ida Ulrich and all of the entities of Woman Rise Up and the Elisha to Elijah Apostolic Prophetic Training Center, just pulling all of those things out of me that I didn't even know were there. I thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I don't take it for granted. I want to thank the people publicly right now, right here, giving you your flowers while you can smell them. Thank you. I thank you. I thank you from the depths of my heart. Thank you. It's not even though those words don't even say thank you enough. And it's letting you know that we all belong. Every single person in the room or even watching this playback. God has something for us. Our portion is to understand our identity and walk in the double portion of what he has in store for us. So let me go forward. I'm not even going to look at the time. If this thing runs over, it just runs over. As I was going back and rewatching part one, I should have just taken 30 more minutes and finished part two right then. But Holy Spirit knows what we need. He gave us some time to say la. That means pause and calmly think on these. He gave us some time to digest what we have heard and mull it over this week. And so, God, we thank you and we praise you that as we go forward into the slide share and, and I was having difficulties getting the slide set up. So, God, you get the glory out of this thing. I was so used to I'm, you. You guys know those that are regular to Double Portion Kingdom Ministries, you know, I flow with slides and the enemy is trying to come in and cause problems and, and technical difficulties. But God always gets the glory. And so even those that were there in the room. You have copies of my slides. I, I printed out the copies of the slides to give to everyone that attended. They may not go through. I didn't go through them in the order in which they were printed, but you have them there for your reference. So those of you that were there, you have your slides. Get ready. We're going into the notes. We're going to do, do a brief review of part one and then go right into part two. And who's going to get the glory? God's going to get all of the glory. Amen. Yes, we are Double Portion Kingdom Ministries. We are an online community of believers that are here lifting up the word of God. We're giving the word of God access and entrance into our lives, each and every life of the believer. Believers believe and we have to have a community to sharpen our believing skills. And so one thing that I always say is that the Bible is a portal into the spirit realm. It's a portal into the kingdom realm. It is a portal into faith realm into the realms of faith. And so God is showing us, um, I had my little keys thing here, but I don't know where it's at. So, okay, those that were there, you know what I'm talking about. When we go talk about faith, but there's one thing that I didn't get to share that I want us to see, know, and really delve into the fact that we have to be aware of the spirit realm. And when we're aware of it, we're aware that we have access. And then not only are we aware and we know that we have access, we acknowledge that access and we activate that access. That's what believers do. Believers are aware of the access that we have into the heavenly realms. We acknowledge it. We activate it. We are glory carriers and kingdom bearers for such a time as this. We need to 
activate our faith. What kind of faith? We gave out a gift on faith keys on Friday night. But here's another thing for us to activate the 2911 power of faith. We're in the season between Resurrection Sunday and Pentecost Sunday, which will be on May the 28th. And even Brother Al had said that. He said, it's like, we're like in the upper room. Come on, the conference room that we were in was in the upper room. My office here in the house is in the upper room. We're in the upper room waiting to be empowered with power from on high, which that's what Pentecost celebrate. And so when I, when God gave me this word about three, four years ago, that we are to live in the 2911 power. What is 2911? This is a side message. It's not in your notes if, or you could take it. If you've been attached to me, you've heard it before. The book of Acts only has 28 chapters in it. Holy Spirit is yet living and writing the book of Acts, the acts of faith, the acts of Holy Spirit through every single one of us believers. So we are the 29th book of Acts. That's the 29. And then where does the 11 come from? In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, it's called the hall of faith. And we're finding that by faith, by faith, by faith, through faith, all these people um, fulfilled purpose and destiny, why they are, their spirit was sent to the earth realm by faith, through faith. But then at the end, there are some that didn't receive what they remained in faith. So we ought to live a 2911 life. If Holy Spirit is yet writing through your life, you are the 29th book of Acts. And if your faith story were to end up in Hebrews 11, how would it read and what would we say? And if you never thought of it like that, from this day forward, I want you to be aware that you have access, acknowledge it, activate it, and walk out in that kind of power, that kind of faith that's empowered from the heavenly realm of who God is. We're going to see it even more. We went over the fact that faith is is the acronym that God gave me in January of last year for faith, that faith is foundational. It is foundational for us to understand our identity as a spirit being. It is foundational for us to understand that it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. The A is anointed. That I is intrinsic. That means it's innate. It's within me. It's the imago Dei. That faith is that is that part. And then the T, that it's true, that it's trusted, that it's tried. Our faith will be tried and it can be trusted. And then H is the holiness or the heavenly realms. God is testing our faith on the gift we gave. We gave three keys with some mustard seed. And these are some faith seeds or faith keys for us to understand on what it means to understand our identity. According to Mark 431, you have to have faith the size of a mustard seed. But then in Matthew 633, you are to seek first the kingdom. It may start out the size of a mustard seed, but oh, it will grow. And then in Matthew 16, 19, he gave you keys to the kingdom. And these keys are to help us understand and become aware of what's going on in the spirit realm. Our theme scripture for this retreat was Genesis 1, 28. But let's back it up to verse 26. In the Lexingham English Bible, I love the wording that it has here. It says, and God said, let us, that's us, make humankind in our image and according to our likeness and let them, that's us, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of heaven and the cattle and over all the earth and over every moving thing that moves upon the earth. So in verse 26, they said it. Verse 27, so God created humankind in his image. In the likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So he created mankind in his image, both the male and the female. One is not lesser than the other. It's just a matter of order in God. Now, they were created, both created in the same image. And they were both given the same mandate in the spirit realm. This is the spirit of man being created. Genesis chapter two is when he begins to create the dirt suit and, and breathe the soul into them. So stay right here, Paulette, pump the brakes, read verse 28. So he said, he did, and then he blessed them. God blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, and over every animal that moves upon the earth. I meditated in this for some time and the Holy Spirit allowed me to put it like this in a side-by-side -side, in a parallel so that we can understand what is going on with this blessing. In verse 26, he said, verse 27, he did, verse 28, then he blessed them. This is the whole thing. This is why all three days of the retreat, we were delving into the song about the blessing. We, we had it uh, on a track on Friday night, on Saturday, 
Twinkle blessed us by ministering out of her spirit, the song, The Blessing. And then on Sunday, what we just shared with us, the dance with Melvin Crispell and Paulette Denise of, of the blessing of God. God blessed him. When you understand the blessing, you will walk in the peace. When you understand the blessing, even what God told me was the blessing of fruitfulness and multiplication empowers mankind to fill the earth and subdue it. Because you see here in the verse 26, he said he said that and he gave them rule. Then when he blessed them, he, he, he told them to be fruitful and multiply. And by being fruitful and multiplying, they'll be able to fill the earth. They'll be able to subdue it. And then there, verse this these last three points are a repeat of what happened in verse 26. Meditate in that. You have it on your slide. Take a screenshot if you don't. Meditate what God wants you to do. This is all the spirit being of man. This is not the five foot dirt suit that you see on the camera. This is the spirit, your essence of who you are. God blessed you. He told you to be fruitful and multiply. And that is not just make babies. You ought to be fruitful and multiply and give the kingdom of heaven access in the earth realm on earth as it is in heaven. My God in heaven. But see what happened was, next slide. When he said, let us, let us, let God, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit make humankind in our image. When he made us in his image, what was made in his image was the spirit of man. It is the spirit of man that is created in the image of the usness. It is the spirit of man that is created in the image of God. But as the spirit of man, ma humankind themselves are tripart being. We see the creation of the spirit in Genesis 1, verse 26 through 28. Then when you go over to Genesis chapter 2, he created a body for Adam. He spent some other time with Adam, gave him some other things to do. That's not my story there. And then he put Adam to sleep, created the woman. So that's where the body was created. When he breathed the breath of life into man, that's where the soul came. So man is a three-part being. You are a spirit. You possess a soul and you live in a body. That's humankind. We're made in his image. And those threes just continue and continue and continue. But what had happened then, and then look, when sin happened in Genesis chapter three, there was a separation. There was actually, the separation went this way. There was a great divide, a separation between the spirit being that was created in the spirit and the image, the imago Dei of God. There was a separation that occurred. But when Jesus Christ came as the son in the flesh incarnate, he bridged the gap between the separation that now gave us back contact. What happened when the fall happened? This is what happened. Everything was flipped upside down. We then lived in a drama triangle that was rooted in shame and driven by fear. It was an unholy, it, it says the fallen kingdom of drama. And I remember last year when I was teaching it, I said the word prosecutor, but I meant to say persecutor. In, in the drama triangle, instead of it being a three-part being, the enemy is a counterfeit. He counterfeits everything God does. So his three-part being is persecutor, rescuer, victim. And if your identity is victim, well, they did this to me. And why is this always happening to me? And I can, okay, that's the wrong identity. You're living out of an upside down triangle. And we're going to talk about how to turn that thing right side up by understanding your identity and understanding how to operate in the heavenly realms. The screw tape element is it, by C.S. Lewis. The screw tape letters is what he wrote. And I've titled it the screw tape element is to get us so caught up operating in the upside down triangle instead of the up the upward to get us operating out of fear and these other emotions to get us looking at the wrong kind of emotions instead of operating out of love and the emotions or the things which holy spirit dwelling within produces are so we need to see that about the and look there was a live demonstration about frequencies in the room. And as we were going higher in God, the balloons began to pop in the room just because. Why? Because we were tapping into higher frequencies and the lower frequencies were being exploded. Uh -huh. And then this is how we ended on Friday night, saying, where are you positioned? Which position are you in? Are you in position one, whereby you're seated in heavenly places, you're in the throne of God, you're seated at the right hand of Christ, at the throne of grace, according to Ephesians chapter two, verse seven, is that where you're seated or are you in the other one where you are seated? And look, position one is out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We talked about that, the two trees, there was a choice. You had a, they had a, they were told not to eat from that one. And this, this position, position two, is rooted and grounded in the knowledge of good and evil. 
It's where you are the object of wrath, where you, you're trying to appease God through a religious system. You're working to appease God instead of resting in the fact that it's already done. Victory belongs to Jesus. That was the song that I had Twinkle sing for us on Friday, that victory belongs to Jesus. Death couldn't hold him down. And so if we're trying to serve God through position two, we will always have problems. And now we get to part two. This is where we would have gone if we were there. We're looking at these realms. We're going to delve into this position. What does it mean to be position in position one or in position two? Let's go forward. And, and you know, one of the other things, I don't have my, my um, slide here, but one of the other things that we did was we read Ephesians chapter one, that we want to have the eyes of our understanding flooded with light. Um, and tying in the book of Ephesians with the book of um, Genesis, as Dr. Miles Monroe said, and I have it here in my notes, and it's also in volume four where I wrote that, where Miles Monroe said that before you go to the book of Genesis, trying to understand the beginning of things, a believer should read the book of Ephesians because Genesis reveals the handiwork of God. And look, Genesis in, in Ephesians 2, verse 10, we're called his handiwork, right? Genesis reveals the handiwork of God and Ephesians reveals the mind of God. And this is why we come into the Ephesians prayer in Ephesians 1, verse 17, praying that God would give grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and insight into the mysteries and the secrets into the deep and the intimate knowledge of him. And so I had to tie that Ephesians book together so that we can understand as we go into these realms. And so um, on your own, read, read the entire book of Ephesians, but Ephesians chapter one through chapter three are powerful. If you have my book, volume four, that I don't have one. Yes, I do. Volume four, excuse me. In volume four, I have a whole section going through, delving through the books of Ephesians, all six books of Ephesians and showing us how we need to see it through new eyes, through fresh eyes. And as I was preparing for the retreat, I went back and I was rereading those portions of the book. And it was as if there were new things put in the book that weren't printed there when that book was printed in 2018. Because now I have a better understanding. I'm, I'm becoming aware. I'm activating more of the kingdom. And that's what my, our desire is for every single one of us that we would become aware of what God is doing and activate the kingdom in new realms and new heights. So now let's look at the realms. And for the lack of a better way to put it, I have it here on this slide and we're reading from the bottom up. So realm one is considered the first heavens. It's considered the seen realm. It's actually created. It is the natural realm. That's where you'll see more as we go into this. In realm two, is, is the second heaven, it's the unseen realm. So you have the seen realm, the unseen realm. This unseen realm is also created. That's where angels and, and things as such reside there. It's the supernatural realm. Mm -hmm. So if you always, I wanna see the supernatural. Well, supernatural is commonplace when you understand where you're seated, that you're seated in the third realm, which is the heavenly realm. This is God's abode. This is the, the, the seen realm, because you can see it in the spirit, but it's not a created realm. This is God's abode. This is where God's creation resides. This is the realm that we want to live out of. Let me look in my notes here. I'm, all of that was out of the overflow. So realm one, anything physical, that's you, me, the stars, the animals, anything that physics measures, anything that has a physical substance. It, and in realm one, it has its own laws, such as the law of friction, the law of gravity, the law of heat, the law of transfer. Those are natural laws that operate in realm one. So when we get to realm two, it also has its own laws that are in effect, such as blessing and cursing, confession, faith, unforgiveness. And it, it has things that are in there too. Sometimes angels and demons are here because they are unseen created. Realms one and realm two, these two are the created realms. God created the heavens and the earth. He created the unseen and the seen. Then when you get to realm three, this is the unseen, the uncreated. That's heaven. That they're, they're, But look, in the book of Revelation, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which is also the revelation of things that are to come, there are trees, there are rivers, there are mountains, there are courts. Come on, when we talk about the courts of heaven, you're accessing this third realm. There are governments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's another realm that's not on here. And that's where God himself is. 
Now, he does a lot of dwelling in realm three, but his abode is outside of, of these realms. And that I, I can't explain that. Let's keep going and, and delve into these realms a little bit more. So when we get to, um, okay, those slides are the same. Next one. So man is a three-part being, right? Your spirit lives in realm one and your spirit accesses realm one. You access realm one through, I'm not spirit, your body. Your body lives in realm one. Your body accesses realm one. Remember, he created the body in Genesis two. He formed the body. Then realm two is where your soul resides. You access realm two with your soul. That's your thought life. That's, come on. That's where imaginations that need to be pulled down. That, that uh, In this realm, he breathed the breath of life. That's when the soul entered into the body in realm two. But realm three we were all born spiritually dead. Now, when you were born, your body and your soul were intact, but your spiritual, con look, Jeremiah 1, 5, before I knew you, before you were in your mother's womb, before you hit the natural realm, the body realm, you were a spirit being in my presence. You came from realm three and you entered into realm one. That's Genesis 1, 26 through 28, that you were created in the image of God. And so let me see what I had in my notes here. Um, ooh, I was saying how the spirit never sleeps, but the body and the soul need rest. You have to rest your mind and you need rest for your mind. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 tells us that we need rest for our mind. My body is to be in subjection and my spirit never sleeps. That's why my body has my, my spirit has to rule over everything. There was this book, my body, his life, the, um, life changing truths that will dispel many of your frustrations. And it'll place the key to victory and an overcoming life into your hands. In this book, Paul Trulin said, our spirit is meant to be the king. Look, the king, our, you'll see it in a minute. Our spirit is meant to be the king. Our servant is meant to be a soul. And the body is supposed to be a slave. If the body is supposed to serve our spirit as, as it's reunited with God. Mm hmm And so let's look a little deeper into these realms. I said, I could have gone 30 more minutes and finished this. But God knew what we needed. So um, we are the tabernacle of God. So we are the tabernacle of God. And this was a teaching that happened back in the 90s where we understood that the outer court is the body. The inner court is the soul. It's that spirit realm. It's the supernatural realm. Things happen in the inner court through, in the supernatural. But then the third realm is the holy of holies. And this is where we reign as kings and priests. If we try, I see a, a typo on there. If we try and reign as kings and priests from realm one, we're not going you, you, that the laws of realm three don't operate in the laws of realm one. I'm saying a lot right here. And prayerfully, you are going to experience compound revelation, meaning that that's my word for this year is compound revelation and abundant grace, meaning that all of the things that have been revealed to you over the years, you're going to look at them again with fresh eyes and they're going to compound. They're going to mean something bigger, something more. So when we say that we are God's tabernacle and we look at this, even the, the, the three part being God created us. We are a three-part being, and then things operate in three parts as well, such as the government. You have local courts, a high court, a supreme court. But guess what? These, come on, 1 Corinthians 13, he said, these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Why? Because love is what accesses realm three. I'm hoping about it. I'm hoping in the natural that it'll happen. And do I, do I have enough faith? This is where people start saying, do I have enough faith? But my faith is in the fact that the love of God is ruling on my behalf. Good Jesus. Jesus. And so these realms go deeper and deeper. And there's so much more. Let me tell you something. I learned this concept and principle from one video that was about an hour and 30 minutes long. I took it, transcribed it, turned it into my own notes. I taught it in an 11 part message, learning how I can condense it into two 30 minute messages for us at the retreat. So this thing, th how deep the rabbit hole goes, it goes deep. And if you, how, what you receive of it is what you will, what you will go after. You Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom in realm three, not just realm two and realm one. But see, remember we said how the world got turned upside down, those triangles. Let me show you how these triangles fit into these ranks like this. 
So our original, we were created, God let us, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, create mankind, we're a spirit, we possess a soul, we live in a body, in our image. See, remember, your body accesses realm one, your soul accesses realm two. More of this triangle fits into realm two, but really where we want to go and you want to be led from the top up, your spirit taps into and accesses realm three, but in the upside down kingdom where sin came in and we try and live instead of this is living by the tree of life where you're rooted and grounded in the life of god this is living in the knowledge of good and evil it doesn't make it to round three it stops in round two because good and evil cannot access round three you can be very good you can be very mm, good and evil all of that, the knowledge of that, understanding spiritual laws, understanding natural laws. Yes, it's better than realm one, but it's not realm three. And there are many people that think they're operating in realm three because they mastered the laws of realm two, but they're not. And I'm not the one to judge. It's the, the when we say that he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords, he is the king, we are the kings. He is the Lord. We are the Lord. He judges us. I'm not going to judge another man's servant. But are you operating in realm two? Real good thinking you in realm three. And see, realm one is that upside down. That's when your identity is victim. That's when your identity is anything else besides that you're created in God. And so I said the right side up triangle is where you're led by the spirit. That's where you learn to rule and have dominion, your true identity is in the right side up triangle because the upside down, the screw tape element is based on the tree that was eaten of, is based on religion, is based on blue pill living instead of red pill living. Hello, Jesus. Should have made that triangle blue. And so let's just look at this a little deeper, looking at how these three realms, the three realms operate, realm three operates using the tree of life. Realms one and two operate using the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So which one are you going to live by? And see, I have in here in my notes that the tree of knowledge of good and evil has a fruit. It's one fruit. It's the good fruit and the evil fruit. It's the GE fruit. Are you going to live by that tree? Or are you going to live by the tree of life? It has a fruit. His name is Jesus. <laughs> you were created in his image. Um. You take the, the tree of good and evil and you do something good for God. You've just done something evil because it's of the wrong fruit. That's why you can't be good enough to get into heaven. You have to be God enough. Recognize that you are created in the image of the gods. So, but round three works by the tree of life. It works by intimacy. It works by, in a sense, you receive things because of Christ. You are fathered into things in round three. You see how these realms work. I'm, I'm purposely calming down so we can see these three realms operating in our lives in different dimensions and different ways. And then in this one, to rest in Christ, you rest in realm three, where you are seated in Christ Jesus, as we read in Ephesians chapter two. You're resting in Ephesians chapter one. He says that he's loaded you with all um, spiritual blessings. Those spiritual blessings are accessed in realm three. But if we try and access them in realm two and in realm one, it says religion uses realms one and two in an attempt to get to realm three. That's works to appease God or to be good enough. It's not going to work. I pray that you're seeing this. We needed this week to kind of walk pause in this thing. I needed this week so I could see how to present it in a way in which it would be palatable and we could all receive it and grow from it. And then when I was saying kings and priests and where we operate in, these are some other aspects where, where God has given gifts unto men, you know, the ministry gifts. Realm one, look from the, let's go from the bottom up. Remember, realm one was the natural realm. This is where we have the clergy and the layman. This is when everybody is equal. We're on equal realm. Then we get to round two and there's the fivefold. If you try and live out of the fivefold and be the best apostle you can be, the best teacher you can be, the best pastor you can be. I love one of the things that my elder, um, my mentor who's gone on to glory, when I got in her school, she was teaching about the prophetic and I became a teacher with her in the prophetic. And she would say, there were five gifts that were given, but for some reason, everybody wants to be a pastor and they're dismissing all of the other gifts. 
And so there had to be a teaching and an understanding because the foundation of the church is built on the apostles and the prophets. There's scriptures to back this up. I'm not just speaking out the side of my neck. But that operating out of that realm is still realm two. We need to understand. I'm not saying disrespect them, respect them. But we need to understand what it truly means to be priests and kings. And I tell you, um, for the rest of 2023, I'm going to allow Holy Spirit to show me how to open that dimension of us recognizing what it means to operate as a priest and a king. So I'm reigning from realm three. So when I reign from realm three, then I can really understand what it means to operate in realm two and take dominion and authority. Your dominion and authority come from realm three, not realm two alone. It's needed. Jesus. That's, I just said a lot. And, and, and honestly speaking, that's why I said I could have went 30 more minutes. But that's the end of the message. What we need to know and understand is keep in mind not to operate out of the screw tape element. To keep in mind that the work isn't always easy, meaning we have to go back and renew our mind. The Romans 12, that's volume three, that other book that I did. And many of you did get those books. We have to take the time and put the work in, get in the word and allow the word to work itself in our lives. But it's not going to happen just because you attended a conference. Yes, it was a powerful three days. But now it's time for you to take what you receive and go even deeper. The work isn't always easy but it's always worth it. Even to the, the people that were able to sit in counseling sessions with us. This is the theme t-shirt for the counseling portion of what God has Paulette Denise doing as a, a, a Christian counselor with a double doctorate and understanding our identity and mental health issues and understanding um, the renewal of the mind and addictions. The work isn't always easy. You have to renew your mind to be free. You have to renew your mind and walk in your identity that God blessed them. And when you understand that, what God has blessed, no man can curse. When you understand how to come up into realm three, come out of realm one. Come out of realm two and to live and reside from realm three, my God in heaven. And this is a process. I am living in it and I'm the type of person that in Psalm 51, it says, once you... Once you've gone through and renewed your mind and you've purged and cleansed yourself of sin, the sin of not knowing your identity. It says, once you got this thing at verse around 10, it says, then you can turn around and teach transgressors their ways. So my job is to turn around and teach as many people as I can what it means to operate from the heavenly realms for real, for real. So really, we can be kingdom ready by kingdom come for real, for real, and not just a title or a T-shirt that we wear. My prayer at the beginning of the service on Friday was that we all leave changed and we all leave challenged. I pray you've been changed and I, I pray you're changing and I pray you've been challenged to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I'm not working from realm two. I'm working to rest in realm three. God, I thank you and I praise you for the word that you have allowed me to release, rehearse, rehearse, release, rehash reiterate unto our spirits that were created in your image that already knew this, but we had to renew our mind so that we can receive it and operate in these realms of dominion and authority. Thank you, God, for blessing us. It's the blessing. It's the blessing that causes us to be fruitful and to multiply and to subdue the earth and rule over the realms that you've given us to rule over. Give us spiritual eyes to see and spiritual ears to, to hear into realm three and not be trapped and stuck in realm two. Thank you for all of the fivefold ministry gifts that you have given us for such a time as this. But thank you also, no, not but, and thank you also, God, that we're able to see into the new realms, new heights, new dimensions in Jesus' name. Right now, I want to pray for anyone that's online and you need to rededicate your life afresh and a new one to the Lord Jesus Christ. You may, you're saved. You're not, I'm not doubting that. But what you're saying is in light of this new revelation that you've given me, oh God, I need to renew my life unto you afresh and anew. And so God, we thank you for this place of refreshing, this place of renewal, this place of rededication. Or maybe you don't know Jesus Christ. Someone sent you this link on YouTube. You can become aware of his presence in your life that he, what he did in the earth realm was for all of mankind. 
all of humankind that were created in his image. And all we have to do is become aware of him, acknowledge him, realize that we have access and activate what he's done and our lives will be transformed and changed every day that we're yet alive in the land of the living. This is your place of salvation. This is your place of rededication. God, we thank you that as we are moving forward toward the day of Pentecost, when Holy Spirit was poured out on all mankind, we can receive of you any time that we recognize and acknowledge and access you. We give you access to flood us with your presence, Holy Spirit. Speak to our hearts. Lead us and guide us every day that you allow us to stay here. And we'll forever give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and bless God. We have a few short announcements before we close out for today. God, you get the glory. We thank you. Save the day. Get ready. On May the 11th, Thursday, May the 11th, we'll have our generational identity. Um, I was speaking with some of the people at the retreat and Maureen, Miss Maureen, Maureen and Pat and Gloria, bless you. Thank you for coming and trusting us to come to something that you knew no one, but you came and it was such a blessing. You bless me, Maureen. You gave me this title, Compound Healing. We'll have some teaching about healing and then we'll have come on Zoom. This is a Zoom call. You can come with your camera on. At the end, we'll open for Q&A and we'll just, we're just going to have a time in the Lord. This is, look, it's a time to have a retreat once a month. We do this once a month on generational identity. It will be on May the 11th at 7 p.m. And then the men, the flock of men will be meeting on Thursday, May the 18th at 8 p.m. The flock of men. And this is for any man that you know. Maybe they won't come to a church or maybe they won't come to a retreat, but they'll get on this, this, this Zoom call with real men that love Jesus. And so it's get your uncles, brothers, cousins, nephews, fathers, sons, the man next door on the street on this Zoom call on May the 18th at 8 p.m. We want to thank everyone that has sown into Double Portion Kingdom Ministries. Again, we wanna make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not already, so you can receive notifications every time something new comes out. Our contact information is paulettex 7 at gmail.com. You can send your prayer requests, praise reports, um, biblical questions that we will answer either directly to you or in a message to double portion and send it directly to you. If you desire to sow, give an offering to worship through giving to double portion kingdom ministries, you can do so at cash app dollar sign Paulette X7. This is a kingdom offering that you are giving. And we have our offering statement that says, as I tithe and give offerings, I am believing God for blessings and increase, raises and bonuses, benefits, commissions, favorable settlements, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, decreased bills, bills paid off. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of the kingdom. I receive my double portion promise today. We're going to close out with Pastor Don and go back to the retreat with Twinkle Asia, closing us out with just a snippet of praise. God you get the glory. Amen. Pastor Don. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us here at Double Portion Kingdom Ministries, an online community of believers. We pray that something was said this morning that can bring you closer on your walk to becoming a uh, disciple of Christ. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. But most of all, double portion, may the Lord give you peace. Shalom. Lord.